response now. This is getting a little bit spicy, right? Because the Iretel now has finally surfaced in the gold lane. Yeah, now this is a full front-to-back composition for the side of RSG. Falcon, I feel like they, they can... Actually, it's very interesting here because usually when we talk about RSG, SG, and Falcon, I usually say that Falcon is the more one-dimensional team when mm -hmm. it comes to these winning conditions. But here, they can pick, they can go for team fights, they can split the map open, and they can read out on the situations that RSG forced on them with that dawning light to open up the map. So currently, I have to say that I personally like Falcon Esports' draft better compared to RSG. Well, anything can happen because it all comes down towards the draft as well as execution. This game one in this best of five series is going to dictate the tempo here in playoffs day number two. The draft has been set as we head into towards the land of the dawn. Both teams looking to get their tournament lives alive here in their journey for MSC. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be game one between Falcon Esports versus RSGSG. Land of dawn, here we go. But... We've actually done some experiments backstage, right, where we tested the Xavier and the Lolita. Yeah. Now, this is, a, this is a great time to talk about our uh, accomplishments should, should. backstage, right? Uh, so, yeah, Lolita's shield actually just nullifies all the damage, even behind him, right? So, this is going to be really good. It all comes down to positioning and execution, though. If Falcon can get a cheesy Hulk onto 505, bring him out of the picture, it's going to be really good. But if 505 is able to actually stand in front of everybody lining up. It's going to be really, really bad for the side of Falcon. But look here, in the early stage of the game, that's going to be the first pick, I believe. 505 has to burn his flicker. Then that's going to be the Litha Wander also popped, gotten by Falcon up top. Two flickers already in the early stage. Yeah, yeah. that's huge, right? Coming in from Falcon, being able to take these really, really early momentum and especially burning out these really valuable resources. Understanding that these early game rotations are going to be very important, but what is happening there in that mid lane? Ooh, that's first a blood for Falcon Esports here. And again, this is what we mentioned, that early aggression. Yeah, this is exactly what Falcon wants to do as well. They understand that the, the Yeeve can be a detrimental force against the Xavier matchup. If, if you think about it, in an early stage game, Xavier don't exactly do too much. In terms of CC, it's good. And look at this, they are going to go for the setup. Yeah, knockout strike there to CC him. As that's going to be Justin picking up this, the first kill of the game for himself, but the second for Falcon Esports. This is not looking good for RSG so far in the early stage. This was one of the winning conditions coming in from RSG SG, right? To be aware of those early game aggressive picks kickoff styles that Falcon is really accustomed to doing, especially understanding that the Naomi and the Justin duo is so, so evident. So I want to see how Arshi actually likes to tackle onto this. Oh, the CCs coming in from Justin is just so very, very annoying. And things are getting a little bit feisty as well because RSG looks like they are going to force the issue up towards the first turtle objectives. Yeah, RSG, even after those first two picks over the Falcon Esports, they still want to contest onto this turtle. Justin going in for the Mystic Field. Ken jumping in and actually baits out the real world inflation. Ken goes over the knockoff strike, trying to cancel it out, but he gets punished in the midst of it all. The real world manipulation is still there. So Zoning Naomi and Justin away. Turtle taking a half HP. Yellow Flash trying to look for an opening, but Falcon Esports, they decide to disengage and RSG get a free Turtle. Now that's the thing, right? I mean, face value under level 4, it does seem like Falcon has the early pickoff. But the problem is, if they want to contest these early game objectives in that Turtle, they're going to they're gonna get clumped up. And of course, it is going to be very difficult if that real world manipulation starts to try and, you know, just punish the way that Falcon likes to play in those clumped up aggressive situations. Yeah, that's the thing about a composition coming from Falcon Esports. They cannot force a 5v5 fight. They know that the Xavier doesn't scale well against the Yeeve. You saw how the real manipulation positioned itself. There was patience coming from Justin to wait it out because if he's caught out inside the real manipulation, it's nearly impossible for the Xavier to actually come out of it. I agree, you know, it's gonna be really tough for RSG currently up until maybe the neutral objectives, right? When they fight like around the lanes, it's gonna be really tough for Miku, Mikumi and also 505 to just get an opening just because Justin and Naomi, they just present such a threat with that Mystic Field comboed in with the Iron Hook. Yeah, I definitely agree. And on top of all, they are putting Ken on the jungle for Kido to try and match a Karina. Not a big fan of it, but he needs a couple of item power spikes before he actually comes up online. And based on now, he is slowly making his way towards potentially a War Axe or maybe even a, 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 a Bloodless Axe for a little bit more sustain. But once he gets that item power spike, this is where you start to see these Pakito one-hit combos on towards uh, maybe the Yif. He is going to be looking to punish Miku Miku because he is going to be one of the biggest tempo setters coming from RGSG. But before that, let's take a look at the Emblems real quick. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. 
It's gone. Him. It's gone. It's, it's just gone. gone right here. But it's gone. Too much aggression from Falcon here in the early game, so it's just gone. But now we're gonna see here Diablo caught in a weird situation. Oh, that's the bloody hunt. It's gonna be popped there. Is that's gonna be Ken jumping in with a knockout strike, bringing Diablo back? But he's still just being such a nuisance. The dawning light connects onto him. He's still just trying to jiggle out of here, but it is just gonna be a trade. RSG, they get the favorable one, man. They take down the goal laner down below and they pick up so much turret gold. Perhaps this might be the first turret of the game. Yeah, off camera, it actually does seem like something was happening there in that bottom side where Silent was taken down really early here in that game. They are trying to punish them, understanding what an Irithyll can do if she's able to snowball from that early game. This is such a difficult game for Falcon, considering that they need to rely on Yellow Flash, uh, uh, sorry, on Naomi a little bit more to set up for this amazing Iron Hooks. Ooh. But it's so difficult, but here comes the whole Miku Miki. He's uh, gonna be a little bit trouble. He's gonna be a okay, but the turtle seems like Falcon is gonna be a good opportunity to set things up for this fight. And Falcon, they really want to force the issue. Oh, I don't know about this, man. RSG, they've hit their power spikes as well, but Bray is gonna get suppressed there under everything. Silent goes in for the follow up. That's a kill onto Bray, and the hook connects onto Baby Cakes. He's gonna get taken down here. Naomi survives. Yellow Flash picks up a double kill as Diablo is forced to run for the hills. Falcon, they have been able to take the turtle position, and now that's a free turtle for Falcon. Four versus zero trade here from the side of RSG as Falcon is going to be standing up on top. And the thing is, the way that they were able to maneuver around that was in a sense that they weren't clumped up under that real world manipulation. And instantly, the hooks came in and the pickoff came to play. And that is how Falcon should be maneuvering around whenever they have to go for these neutral objectives on the board. You know, it comes back to the question where I actually brought up as well. Because if you think about it, they need to really heavily depend on Naomi setting up for all these fights, but at the same time, when it comes to split push, it's gonna be a little bit different, but the fight, Falcon, they're getting a little angsty, Naomi looking for the hook. Yeah, Naomi again, he's just so on point that you'll give it over to Justin as well. He has four kills. Man, if Justin just goes even in lane, it's already a very scary Xavier. Now that he has four kills, this is what Falcon likes to do. They use this, they start snowballing, and with that aggression, they just take full map control into the enemy side, invading, and that's what they're trying to do here. He gets another one! Miku gets hooked! He does not have his flicker, it's up in 30 seconds. He gets punished for it, he's forced to play, he's forced to recall here, perhaps. But no, he just goes for regeneration, and again, Falcon with the aggression. Falcon with the aggression and Falcon with the early lead. Already 3,000 here in the sixth minute. And my question is, how should RSGSG actually maneuver oh. through this? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a little bit different considering that they depended on Miku Miku to actually kind of punish Justin, right? But now Justin is in a situation where he's got the mystery shop, he's got 4 0 and 3. He's going to be able to skyrocket in towards his items a little bit quicker compared to Miku Miki. So, as of yet, they have to find a way to actually slow down this aggression coming from Falcon and figure out how to deal with Naomi, which is the biggest threat coming from Falcon Esports. We mentioned Justin, we mentioned Silent, but again, they always. What was that? Naomi picks up another hook. It's going to be the Numenau Blast to, re to just respond to that play, but again, it just feels like Falcon with Naomi on this Franco. They just get all of the picks they really want. They just execute on the game plan right now as Yellow Flash opens up the map for that turtle side. Naomi looking for the play. That's gonna be 505 putting the shield up, but he is gonna get immobilized by the Mystic Field. Yellow Fa Flash picks up the triple. Baby Cake's up there, just does no damage at the stage of the game. And Falcon, they're pushing on. In this first game, it does feel like Falcon, they're moving as a unit. The Justin as well as the Naomi duo has been just so notorious across the board and you can see it happening on screen. I mean, the way that he goes in for the Iron Hook actually connects and the way that Justin is able to respond to that is just so timely in the sense that once again, Falcon with a 4,000 gold lead, their synergy is on point and RSG Singapore, they are falling behind. Yeah, RSG, they do, they weren't expecting all this uh, maneuvering coming from Falcon East, but we kind of expect that, hey, maybe, you know, if there's a Franco, they are going to be trying to set up some sort of plays down to his goal lead XP, but it didn't exactly happen. Falcon just focused on mid control all the way through, and because they're taking the tier one down middle, it just opens up the, well, the map for Falcon, and they're able to just invade constantly, and this is a very difficult to be in what? coming from RGSG. That's the damage from one combo from Justin. Again, this is what we mentioned, 405 up top, 505, going to be able to bait Yellow Flash in, but the Noonan Blast connects onto it. Baby Cake's looking for the damage, but the Wesker just cannot burst them down at the stage of the game with the Infernum, and it's just going to be a free trade for Falcon. They pick up a turret for the price of none. Ken goes in. Darning Light connects. The synergy is out of this room, man. Naomi finally, finally misses a hook. So 
He's human. He's he human. is human. He's, He's human. human. We, we have to make sure, right? Because the chances of that landing every single time and on those really huge Bonkers. priority targets of RSG Singapore, that's just out of this world. And once again, Falcon being able to get another trade on the board and they just are able to steal RSG Singapore's turrets under their own nose. And again, right, when we're talking about Falcon Esports, when we're talking about MSC, everyone's saying, oh yeah, Lights Franco, Vince Franco, Naomi? Oh. No one has mentioned this Franco. Yes, it is his signature pick, but apart from the Burmese, no one really expects this. Even RSG, SG, they left it open for Falcon to pick, and now we're really seeing why it's such a big threat. I definitely agree. And on top of it all, Miku Miku just got his uh, Ice Queen's wand. That's going to be a big factor when it comes to slowing the tempo. However, the scary version right now is that Silent, he got it has claw. So it's not going to be an easy thing to actually take him out in this uh, near fight. So there's going to be a lot of emphasis on trying to punish and slow down the tempo, but it's going to be difficult. But Naomi again with the hooks. Oh man, Bray gets hooked. That's going to be the Combo Wombo coming in. They just chain it so well to stay, to make him stay in place there. Pin him down. Falcon picks up the kill onto the jungler out of all the other members here. And it's just going to be a free Lord for the taking. 10 minutes in, 7,000 gold lead. And what's difficult is like you can say like, oh my god, that is so many resources wasted for just one person. But the fact that Justin can practically spam that dawning light just gives them a little bit of an edge in that current regard and so falcon now with an 8000 gold lead a lord already marching there in that mid side what can rsg sg do because even if let's say they get a really good engage 5v5 miku miku mi goes in for that real world manipulation and that kind of slows down the tempo coming in from falcon's uh, aggression the problem is you can see that miku miku mi is scared you can see the doubt in what's, ha what's happening well, let's see here. Falcon looking to end the game right here. Close it off as that's going to be the Bennett coming out. Using the ultimate to just clear out the waves. Falcon don't really do anything here apart from just taking a few hits onto the turret and also making baby kicks low. Diablo doing well clearing out the enhanced minions down below. A mobility comes oh. in, Bray. Almost just gets hooked there. Dawning Light takes half of Baby Cakes' HP. And again, Falcon, they're taking it slow. They're very patient. Yep, this is going to be an RSG special. They want to try and stall as long as they can. They need to cover commit to this, but here comes Numenor oh! Blast coming in. But the hook from Naomi pulls Miku Miki. Cancels off the real world manipulation. But at the same time, they're all caught in the process of Justin. And it completely blew them off. And that is going to be Diablo down. However, Bray salvaged the situation. They got Naomi and Ken, but he will lose his life in the hands of Yellow Flash. The the turn, man. The turn coming in from Falcon again. It's all on the back of Naomi's play. That could have been so bad for Falcon. It is currently still worth it for them because, oh no, actually they didn't take that turret. So I feel like RSG took the win in that fight. But again, that was such a good engage from the side of 505. Perfectly timed Numenon Blast. Let's take a look at the instant replay though. Presented to you by TikTok. This hook was everything. Yeah, the hook right there, immediately cancelling real nation was just one of the big factors that could slow them down. It was an opportunity for Bray to go crazy with RNG. But this is what I'm talking about. This is the Singapore special that I've known for. They really, really like turning it up and they find opportunities like this. And if they get away a little bit more from this, they will eventually scale into a later stage of the game where they get enough economy to fight back. But the question still remains, can they match up on towards the damage dealt by Justin, who's currently 57,000 on his savior, 12 minutes in the game, with already level 12. I'm not really sure what's happening, right? Because the way that RSG Singapore has drafted this, they are relying heavily oh onto no, the- hook. What? Oh my god, Naomi gets another hook there onto Bray. 505 with a desperate play on a Numenor Blast will try to just scramble the for hook. something! Naomi again gets Miku! The flicker comes out, but that's the turret. Again, this is such a big moment for Falcon. Getting that turret will ensure that now they have the map prio for another two minutes, or maybe just entire game here. The hook just oh no. there. Oh man, just out of range by a little bit. Dawning Light on the three members there. Diablo gonna get caught in the Mystic Field, taken very low, even with the Consecration up. Oh, that was so close, go 505. He, fortunately for him, it was a Lolita. He had the shield to actually block the Iron Hook. But at the same time, this is the this is exactly why Franco is still an S tier pick, despite the not much changes has been made into the patch. It's just so annoying to deal with. 
Oh man, Naomi again, the Lord take it quickly now. It's gonna be Naomi looking for the hook onto Miku Mikumi. Ken gets a kill. Oh man, Ken gets killed there in the fight. The real world manipulation was actually getting that advantage. Now the Mystic Field coming oh, in no. to re-engage beside a Falcon Esports as Naomi goes for suppression, gets one, and that's 505 taken down again. Still worth it for Falcon. They pick up the enhanced Lord. Baby Cakes, this might be too greedy, man. He dashes outside, uh -oh. but he's gonna be pinned down. Uh -oh. Baby Cakes the Wesker trying to outplay Naomi, dealing the damage, and that's silent to pick it off. Killing spree now for the side of Silent. Yellow Flash pushing in that mid lane. They're looking to end right here, right now. Do you think they can? I mean, three members are have already been taken down for the side of RSG. Only two members left with a man advantage. Falcon, they're looking for an end. Yeah. Oh, Diablo, he's trying his best. I think he's going to be over. Look at this. Falcon, they just got so much damage. Miku is just paying with his life, but the crystal will fall, and that is going to be game one by Falcon Esports against RSG SG. That was dominant. I was just.